to MBBS students, let's talk about books. Now, before we get into it, there were a few books which I had purchased, but because first year didn't really go the way I had imagined it to, I did not manage to read everything. But in the end, for my uni exam, I stuck with a few books which managed to get me through and which I'm really happy about. So hopefully this video will be a good guide and a good way to you to know what exactly you should be purchasing or at least have a PDF of. Let's start with anatomy. So basically this is pretty straightforward. Most people either go for BDC or Vishram Singh. For me, because most of my seniors suggested Vishram Singh, I went for that. And I must say, I really grew to like it. I really like the layout and how it's very student friendly. Because if you consider anatomy on the whole, it is a very, very diffuse subject and it's very scattered. There's so much of information. Correlation is essential. And I found that pretty easy to do with Vishram Singh. Um, I like the diagrams, made corners and sections for clinical parts and highlighted it in different texts and kind of get uh, an idea on how to really go about with anatomy. So I really do suggest Vishram Singh. I don't have a huge idea about BDC. I did refer it for the upper limb and lower limb. A very good book and no doubt that you can go for that as well. But if you take Vishram Singh, don't think you're missing out or you have less to study and it's not as vast as BDC. The neuroanatomy of uh, Vishram Singh is amazing and I really like the diagrams. For every single thing, you will find a diagram when it comes to neuroanat. So that's another upper hand. Going for Vishram Singh is a good idea. Now, alongside that, Gray's Anatomy, an outstanding book. I took the secondhand version. But the thing is, I didn't manage to complete that book. So my suggestion is do it from the beginning. I got it after like five, six months. And because I was already facing backlogs, I couldn't really stick with it. So if you're planning to do it, do it from the beginning. And it really helps you when you come to second year, because right now I'm posted in surgery, right? So a lot of the cases, I could have got that visual idea from the beginning if I had maybe used Atlas more or used Gray's Anatomy more. So you can start that, but do it from the beginning. So that's about one part of anatomy. When you come to MBBS, you'll realize that out of the entire anatomy, very less de dedication and devotion is given to embryology. So as a student, you kind of neglect it till the last minute. So I did not really read I.B. Singh. My suggestion is Vishram Singh for embryology. I discovered it like only one and a half months before the exam of my uni. And it's really nice. It's really amazing. I have the PDF version. If you're a fan of the Visham Singh for anatomy, like the lower limb, upper limb, that part, then you will really like the embryology version as well. Manner in which you can correlate. Uh, the problem I had with IB Singh is kind of it's complicated. And because you give less time for embryology, you don't have time to read it in depth and really get that understanding. But if you give that same time to Visham Singh embryology, the concepts come easily. And it makes more sense. And I like how they have real life images as well. So I recommend Vishram Singh for embryology as well. Last but not the least, histology. I am not the best person to be talking about this part of anatomy because this is one subject, one part of anatomy that I dislike a lot. I don't really know how to use the HND pencil properly and identification, not at all my cup of tea. IB Singh is the best, um, but if you're like me and you find it hard to differentiate between this and that, how in my practical exam uh, in the pre-boards, I, I know it sounds very weird but and very absurd. I, I mistook the liver to be the kidney and I was really confident about it, but it was actually the liver. So what I'm trying to say is histology is not my cup of tea. Taking IB Singh, it's good. You can understand it and it's good because it has a lot of clinical stuff as well, which is important. But when it comes to the slide identification, it also depends on your college slides. So more than looking at the um, histo part of IV Singh, you can look at the slides which are provided by the college. And alongside that, there's this website, which I'll put up here, where you get really, really good histo slide pictures and it can help you get that uh, understanding in a better manner. Your practical books have a lot of things. So if you don't have much time to dedicate towards histology from IV Singh, you can read it from your practical book. It's kind of more than enough and you can refer to the clinical part of IV Singh. Now, General Anat, I had BDC, not much to go into it, but it's a good book, right? So that's about the anatomy section. Moving on to the second subject, my favorite, which is physiology. Now, 
I did the mistake of taking both Gaitan and Indu Khurana. See, if you're taking a standard book, stick to it. Don't try and go for an easy thing because once you start getting accumulated with backlogs and when you're under pressure and you're only studying for the sake of the exam, slowly you will start to rely on the easier thing. So basically what I did was because I had Gaitan and Indu Khurana, for like the first three months I only studied from Gaitan and then the exams were coming near so I went for the easier thing of studying from Indu Khurana and I just stuck with that till the end, the end of the year because it's an amazing book as well. But I did not really read Guyton a lot after that. As I've said in a previous video of mine, the study with me in physiology, it's I feel written like really people well. kind of it has good flow charts. Uh, and saying, it's not like, just exam if you study Guyton, why would you study it's from It's written in a way that why you would really you study understand. Guyton? It has all the points and if you're like me and you take notes from whatever you're studying, you should go for that book. What my senior said was that Indu Kurana is really good, but it kind of spoon feeds you with information. On the other hand, Gaitan is like written in a hidden language and you need to search for answers. So what he said was like it helps build your concept while uh, Indu Kurana spoon feeds you. But because MBBS is a whole new journey and the first year is going to be filled with different activities, I feel like it's okay to be spoon fed in one subject and Indu Kurana is actually really good. Sembolingam, I don't like that book at all. Uh, it's just like bullet points. I would not recommend that book. If it works for you, good. <laughs> I'm moving on to biochemistry. Do people go for the Jambulkar books, the notebooks? Uh, I was not a fan of that. I really like his teaching, not that. I have a habit of taking my own notes, so I don't like it when someone else's notes is handed over to me like I want to do it on my own so that's the main reason that his notes have not worked for me and I did not rely on them for me that subject seemed to be just memory based and I never grew to like that subject and I think the main reason was because I did not find the right textbook Satyanarayan is very very um information oriented and a lot of concepts have not been explained well so the book i would recommend for biochemistry is pankaja nair it's a very nice book and not many people know of it but it will really make you like biochemistry in a better way and it's like because we are used to the ncrt part during neat exam right it kind of follows that pattern like how you like organic chemistry of ncrt right it's kind of in that manner it, the concepts are well explained, it's related to life and it's written in a way that makes you feel like biochemistry is not just memorizing stuff and it has good concepts engraved in it. So you can refer this book, but yes, after you read from that textbook, please go through Satyanarayan as well or through the notes of Chambulkar or Vasudevan, whatever, because some of the concepts are missing in that textbook and are found there in Satyanarayan and a lot of the university exams rely on that on these other books so this was about the first year mbbs subjects the books you should refer alongside that during your practicals your school i mean your college will provide you with practical guidebooks and that is more than enough the key points from this video that you should take is stick to very limited books for one subject try and go only for one book so for, if you're taking guidance, don't go for another book because if you understand the concept, you'll be able to write it in the exam, nothing like that. And at the end, the concept is what matters more. And if you happen to take two books, know that at the end of the year, one book will remain literally untouched. So it's kind of going to be like a waste. Um, and if you feel like you want to refer to multiple things, take one hard copy and the other things you can take like PDF forms. Don't hesitate to go on the internet surf around and go on YouTube, watch different sorts of videos and don't hesitate to use your college library to the fullest extreme. A lot of practical dissection books, manuals and different handbooks are available. So instead of purchasing that, you can have a look through that. Thing is, every book is good. Every person who wrote it is very knowledgeable. You should know how to go about it and don't get, um, you know, overwhelmed by the size of the books or the quantity of information in it once you start the flow will come and it'll all go as it should be going so that's it for this video and if you have any more doubts regarding books or the different sort of things you'll be needing in first year mbbs you can leave a comment down below and i hope this video is helpful come back next week for more time out with icv bye Da 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 da